guys, Jim Hudson here. Uh, welcome everyone, all you new folks, and uh, I'm just glad to see you. Um, I want to introduce our our main man of the evening, John Donahoe, and uh, you can rock and roll, man. We got some good stuff tonight. Thanks very much, Jim, and I appreciate that. And uh, we've got <laughs> just to confirm for those who were here last week, we are recording on two, three, four machines, just in case. Now, right now, you should see a poll on your screen. I would like you to uh, vote on that poll because we're going to be talking about split testing here this evening. So I'm going to give that. If you see that poll up on your screen, please answer that, and then we can proceed. But uh, we are going to be talking about split testing, which is a great, very simple way without doing any more traffic building and anything else to literally create a ton of extra profit and action. I'm going to close the poll in five, four, three, two, one. Close the poll, and then we're going to share the results. Um, the question was, how many of you have ever done split testing in any form? And uh, you can see the results there. There's uh, one person who said that they're a class five split testing ninja. Um, quite a few people said, yeah, they've tried it, but okay. And then most people, you'll see the vast majority, have never done any split testing at all. Uh, so good. That's what we're going to cover tonight. So, okay. What we're going to do then is, um, let me just make sure we're doing this. Let's actually start tonight's session because um, both Jim and I made a joke before we started here that uh, we're going to be, you know, if I brought him on to co-host, he would be basically, all we would talk about is cookies and killing zombies, because that's what me and him do. Um, <laughs> that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the funny thing is, a lot of what we're going to be talking about is actually to do with cookies, just not the oatmeal raisin ones that we both like. Um, because when you're dealing with cookies or anything else, we use those for tracking. And uh, Jim has been doing a lot of split testing on different things. He's been testing all sorts of split testing systems recently. So I thought it'd actually be cool to bring him on a little bit as we talk about this and, uh, you know, talk about some of the, the two levels of split testing. Oh, and Taffy. Yes, he did mention, yeah, we did say that we would be talking about Taffy, especially. Oh, absolutely. You got to have Huckleberry Taffy, but I won't hog the session. I'm just, we'll <laughs> cover a little bit about what we're doing with, uh, what I was doing with some rotator uh, items and some of the other banner uh, split testing I was doing later. Uh, yeah, that that's a, that's it. I mean, um, split testing can be used for anything, whether you're doing sales pages, squeeze pages, media buys, um, pay per click advertising. There's many different levels. I mean, I use it for um, pretty much everything. Videos. I split test my sales videos. I split test all the copy on my sales pages. Um, I do. Well, we'll get into all the different uh, types of it, but um, we're coming back to Taffy, which is the important topic here tonight. Jim actually introduced me to, I would have to say it was legal crack, and that was Huckleberry Taffy. Um, Nev, I didn't even know Huckleberries existed until he uh, sent me that, and uh, that's some good stuff, and I want to split test every type of taffy out there that has huckleberries in it. That's I know you thought that was Huckleberry Hound. It was a cartoon. That was about it. <laughs> well, I only knew it from Tombstone, where it says, I'll be ah, your huckleberry. Yeah. And I'm like, exactly. I just thought that was an okay term of endearment. No, these little berries are like crack cocaine. And someone with a sweet tooth like me, that's just terrible. But anyway, let's dive in. <laughs> in a wee bit here and i'm going to kind of cover some of the stuff that i'm doing with split testing on our new launch that's coming up which is promote me pro which is happening this monday so it's all hands on deck but a lot of what we do is based on optimizing uh everything was um here's the scenario and, and jim uh knows about this as well because he's going through some similar stuff with uh some of the stuff he's promoting but you've got two base things going on. Um, when you have, okay, I've got too many pens on my desk and none of them are my graphics tablet one. Okay, there we go. We'll grab this one. You've got two types of uh, split testing. You have A, B split testing, 
I'm just going to call it ST for uh, split testing. And then you have what's called MV split testing, which is multivariate. In other words, on one item, you can rotate through a whole load of things um, to see which one's going to work out best, which item is converting best. And then you have a third level, which is basically hybrid split testing. And this is the version I do. So most people who have heard of split testing, I would say 90% are at the AB level. 5%, well, actually, I'd say it's closer to 7% know about multivariate split testing. This hybrid is actually a fusion of both of these. And that's the realm where the big money is. Because not only are you testing entire um, groups of things at this level, but then even on each group, you're rotating through multiple items. The net result is you get the biggest bang for your buck. Now, give an example. Now, Jim, you're working with um, some offers. I won't, I won't say what offers and niche they are, but you're driving traffic to a couple of squeeze pages and you're rotating through these squeeze pages. Um, now, just confirm for me, they, they are squeeze pages for certain offers and you're using a rotator script, that's correct? Yeah, there's a rotator script that... Um we're going to be using that we'll just stick a different offer up in there and it also lead capture so you could put 8 10 12 in there now if that particular offer person and you could do your own products as well or your own um, blind capture but the thing is if you're going to put uh, something into an infusion soft funnel for example you can take and do that because they have a lifetime cookie so if, even if you're doing an affiliate deal you can test multiple ones and multiple offers there and um, you know it seems to work pretty well okay cool and that's going to be a dollar bill in his hand so that looks pretty close <laughs> we'll give him great big clown feet as well uh, so yeah any one that you drive in you need something to intersect that user and that is basically a rotator now there's all sorts of systems out there that do this i'm going to show you a couple of them but the idea is that they come to a special link. What happens is this link then directs them to what is set up in your campaign. What, and what happens is it drops the cookie on their machine so it knows who this person is. Okay, we know now who this person is and that they came to offer, we'll call this offer one, two, three, four. Five, which is going to give a kind of an explanation of two different types of cook, um, split testing here. So the rotator sets up a campaign, and now it could be a script, or a plugin, or a service. I use. I'm going to show you one of the services I use for this. And what happens is that each one of these pages might be, for example, a squeeze page system, and it could be different layouts, and they all could redirect to different offers or the same offer could all be whatever monetization you want. We're going to keep it simple by just saying it's one offer. And all we're doing is seeing, okay, which version of our squeeze page is best. Now, the rotator drops this cookie and then redirects them, but it acts as a middleman. It acts as a barrier between them and the actual pages. And then what happens is after the, as the campaign's running, you get stats basically of, uh, which one is producing the best results. Now, say, in this case, offer two, um, we'll put offer number four in there, and five maybe doesn't even get a look in. But offer two, okay, apparently I can't count because I ended up with six segments. So we'll make offer three the best one. So that one won out. Well, so what happens is over time, if you've got one that's a clear leader, what you do is you kill the ones that are crap and then you can take offer three and then replicate it. So it could be three version two, three version three. You start over time building up, okay, which one by changing very subtle things, everything from the headline, the graphics, even the colors, 
or a background image or even the buttons. You can start swapping things out. Well, that works very, very well. You can figure out very quickly which one is going to make you more money. We do this with um, pay-per-click ads, squeeze pages, sales pages. To give an example, one thing I do is I'll take people and maybe do a solo mailing before I do a launch. I'll have a sales page and I might have, okay, besides the bad drawing, I might have, for example, a really long sales page. And then, okay, don't expect, this isn't the shape of the page, thankfully. I just have very bad drawing skills. So as I have my sales page, I might have a short version and a long version. And then what I do is I will go do a solo mailing as an example to test my sales page. And then I'll have a rotator, which will randomly show 50 50, um, which of these two, you know, and then I'll know by dropping a little tracking item on here, this basically says, okay, if they now click on this buy button and the buy button on here and they check out, they go through, say, I don't know, JV Zoo as an example. And then when they come to the thank you page, which is the download page or what have you, I have another little thing on here that says, yep, that was a conversion. But because this dropped, well, actually the cookie gets dropped here, it knows straight off the bat, okay, if I see this and it matches cookie one or campaign or experiment two, and this one actually came from here. This, this is the, let me just change the color of the pen here. Um, so say this person came in, went through the rotator, they saw version one and said, okay, I'm going to buy. They come through, end up on the download page. I know that is plus one for campaign one. So I'm good to go. And then over a period of time, you'll start to see which result is the best one and uh, you're good to go. And now I do this with ClickBank offers. I do this with my full sales funnels and everything else. But the next level up from that is the multivariate testing where I might have, even though I've got two pages, you know, I should have done that in the first place. I just realized I could do straight lines if I do that, 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 that. Didn't say it was going to be right angles, but, you know, we're, see, I wish I'd remembered that soon. I just, just popped in my head. So say for version one was a longer one, version two is shorter. But even in this, I could have a whole load of headlines and I can rotate. Okay, say I've got three headlines on each one. Even then, I can do on-page optimization. And in Google, actually, Google has a facility to do this for free. It's called uh, Content Experiments. And you can do this through analytics. You can set your goals and what have you. But even here, I could have, um, and I'll, I do this on my squeeze pages a lot. Let me do this. Um, so I could have headline one, two, three, one, two, three. So I could try even then different headlines because people are going to come to this one. They're going to see a random, you know, they're coming randomly to this page, but then they're seeing, okay, random elements. And I could have different buy buttons set out version one, two, three. And I get to know, okay, if, if I've got like five experiments going on on one page, so I've got, say, headline, um, subhead, or subheadline, uh, bullets. Um, so that's three. And then I can have, I can split test the video. And then buy button. Say that's the five experiments. Well, I know, say, from my group, headline two got the best. Uh, subheadline one got the best. Sub, uh, bullet section or group three got the best. Video three got the best. And the buy button number seven got the best results. 
what happens is it knows which one by the same tracking cookie on the thank you page. It knows, okay, these combinations were working the best. Well, what happens with that multivariate split testing, uh, you end up with the best combination on this page. So for this short page, maybe my combination is 21337 for whatever groups I'm doing. Now, the number doesn't mean anything. It just knows that out of everything, all the elements, this combination worked best on this short page. Now, that doesn't mean this same combination would work great on the long page. You might end up with completely different results. But that's why you can test. This is the hybrid split testing where you test at the top level your layouts and then the bottom level. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wow, that is complicated. How the hell do I do all of that? Well, again, it's not as complicated as a lot of people make it. It's actually very, very simple when you get down to it. And I'm going to show you a couple of split testing methods to do both AB, multivariate, and some live examples. The thing is, this can be used in any area of your marketing at all. If you've got a squeeze page, a landing page, if you've got an affiliate offer, I mean, a really simple example. Say you've got a niche where you're promoting a CPA offer or a ClickBank offer. You could even split test just down to the actual link that goes out. Which one is going to work out best, yada, yada, yada. Now, if you're promoting someone else's product, obviously you don't have any control of the download page, but a lot of times you can ask them to put a tracking link or a cookie on the page. So if you know the person or you've reached out and spoken to that person, they're um, usually very open to doing that. Now, that being said, I launch a lot of products, okay? I have never, ever had a marketer ask me, can I put a tracking cookie on your download page or your thank you page? So out of all of the so-called experts and gurus out there, no one has ever asked me to do that. Now, that being said, most of the time, if I'm doing promotions and what have you, I am asking that. If I'm going to do a long-term promotion, I do apologize. My phone's going off. I forgot to get rid of them. Hold on one second, guys. Let me put myself on mute. Two seconds here. Stuff happens when you're live, I guess. There's no worries there. I just turned my phone off, by the way, so... Um... We'll get it all figured out. I got to think, man, I left the phone on. I wonder what happens if we, if we get a call. Okay, well, thank you for covering that, Jim. I appreciate it. Good thing I had a co-host. <laughs> that was my mother-in-law who forgot I was I was live at 6 o'clock. So uh, usually my, my parents-in-law, we're helping them launch businesses. But they usually know six o'clock is a no call time. And I just forgot to take the bloody phones out of the office like I usually do or turn them off. So um, what I'm showing you here is a service I use uh, called Link Tracker. Now, I use this all of the time with emails. And uh, when you click on an email or get an email from me, you'll see something like imsclink.com forward slash what have you. That is, I'll show you this, and come on, okay. Basically what this is doing is taking your click as you come through and saying, okay, we've put in a, a nice link on here. It looks attractive, but what it's doing, it's doing all the tracking and then redirecting to the offer. Now. If I'm putting it through, uh, say, a squeeze page or I've got two pages I'm promoting, I might have offer one, offer two, or maybe multiple testing. I can split test or literally I can not even split test and just know what my sales are by doing, okay, just tracking, getting stats, clicks, and, um, you know, 
activity. I can literally track the effectiveness of my emails. So even though um, I'm not split testing most of the time with my email stuff when I'm doing JB offers, I am make I'm double checking basically the stats that I'm getting from Aweber or something like that. But if I'm promoting my own offer to my own squeeze, for example, I could have, if I was crafty, use it to go through Facebook. So like a Facebook tab, like we talked about last week, and then the tab link goes to imsclink.com forward slash, I don't know, say imsc. And then that could then go to two or three different pitch pages for that as I see fit. And I'm going to show you literally how I set that up right now. So this is Link Tracker. Now, Link Tracker is a link cloaking and service. You can, it's, it's pretty cheap. I remember it's, I think it's like base package is like $9. Um, I use, I think I'm actually on the extreme one, but you can do all sorts of stuff with this. You can do viral cloaking, branded domains. You can track thousands upon thousands of clicks. Uh, and the funny thing is I'm considering making this a plugin for WordPress because, well, basically that's a monthly fee. Uh, I could do it for a one-off fee and be done with it. But let's just have a look at an example. So I'm going to add a link and I'm going to call this, let's call it uh, IMSC uh, Inner Circle uh, Promote Me Pro Special. Now, this is just for my reference. And then I could say, okay, where's the destination? Well, we're going to do um, split testing. So we don't set a destination, but I could call it the IMSC or the... Um, PMP special. That would be the, the, the clean link. And then I can assign it to a group if I want to. I've got lots and lots of groups in this account. And then there is a, other options like uh, to link it in your account. So if you get a 404, they also have a viral bar and all sorts of stuff. But the thing I'm interested in here is the split testing and rotation. Now you can do all sorts of things like conversion tracking. So you can track okay if someone does click how much is that worth that all works out there um and someone says that there's a plugin out there called max blog press ninja affiliate yeah there's, there's that one does is mostly for um affiliate links but we uh we can use this for multiple multiple things so i appreciate that but yeah max blog press is ninja affiliate is pretty cool for cloaking links and stuff but we we're doing a lot of stats from this as well so here's the, this is the cloaking option where you can cloak uh, just via an iframe and hide from the search engines and stuff like that uh, works pretty well. But we're going to set up the split testing and say, for example, I could go to, um, let me see, I am success center. I'm bringing these URLs up, but I know one of them is sign up and then I could have um, that on say 33%. And then I could have sign up now, which could just be a nice URL for another one. And then if you've got to add up to exactly um, 100%. So the next one would be, say, I've got, um, say, join now. Now, these would be the URLs of my different pitch pages. Or I could just do sign up now forward slash one or create them as sub pages, whatever you're doing. But you'll notice if I do that, if I do 33%, that's 99%. That's not work. So the bias would be if I do 34%, that means this one's going to get shown 1% more. That's not really a fair test. So I might add more and just say, you know, add one more with a different test. And then I could do like 25% across the board so that I know it all adds up nicely. Now, um, you may want to just show the same URL to the same person, and then you can set up conversion tracking. So I know that anyone comes here, it's worth a dollar to $47 a month. So I can then save that link. Oh, I've got to, I've got to put the destination URL. Um, 
which it ignores, by the way. So let's do that. So we'll do that. It does ignore that. It says it ignores the destination URL, but apparently you do need one in there anyway. So now that I've saved that link, it's good. It says, okay, that's good. Now I can now create a campaign from this one or view the stats. Uh, but I do also need my conversion code. So what I would do is now that that's all set up, I'm happy with that. Um, I would need to create my conversion code, which I'll call it IMSC sign up and then conversion value. It's a $1 trial, but um, let's say it was worth $47. And then it basically gives you just a pixel code that you drop on your page where is the welcome once you've got a conversion. And it knows, okay, you're good to go. That's it. So now I can drop that in and it knows right from my campaign that the post back URL is this and it's going to do what it needs to do. It's all good. It knows that I'm attaching this, I'm rocking and rolling, and off I go. So now I have a full rotator script that can go through four um, different pages that I've set up. Now, again, you can use um, put together or uh, you know click together squeeze pages from something like Optimize Press or a sales page. I mean, that's what I use um, for all of my stuff. I mean, all of Promote Me Pro is done on uh, Optimize Press. And just to show you, I'll give you a sneak peek here, by the way. And by the way, you guys are going to get a copy of Promote Me Pro at 50% discount for the developer license. The developer license is going to be uh, $47, and uh, you're going to get that at 50% uh, off. I don't want to give it to you yet because it's not quite ready yet, but I will be uh, come Monday morning. You guys are going to get an email before everyone else to get your hands on a copy. Uh, so let me just show you the sales page here as an example. Um, so right now, this is the current sales page and all built on um, optimized press. And I would rotate things like the headline the subhead or the pre-headline, maybe these bullets. So even though I've got like, this is a very long page. I went long form on this one, um, which is, there's a lot of content on here. In fact, if I zoomed out, I, I did have the original PSD that we built this from, but there's a lot on here. But I would want to change things like maybe the introduction here. We're going to have a video up here, which I haven't even inserted yet. And, you know, we've got bullets, we've got all the different income proofs, the features, the functions. So there might be lots of things I want to test within the page. Even if I know this, this page is converting best, I better optimize it. So what I've done here is I've set up a multivariate split tester. And the one I'm using here as an example, is, and the reason we're doing this is Don mentioned this last week, but I thought it would be a really good idea to talk about this is... Um, Mist, which is Dylan Kingsbury's, who's my JB manager. Um, this is his plugin that he launched with an Irish programmer called Aaron. And basically, it allows me to rotate items on the page. Now, I've set up one experiment here on this um, very simple page. In fact, this is the, the page here. And mm -hmm. let me show you. This is, I just set up a quick headline to test. And you can see if I reload this, it's you see that uh, headline is, if I can shut this guy up in the video because he's bloody annoying. If I refresh this, you can see the, the title is changing right before your eyes. Now, that is because it's testing to see, okay, here's an element, here's an element, here's an element. And it's going to see, okay, which one commanded attention, which one worked the best. So as soon as I click on this, I'm good. I'm done. That's it. It'll know, ah, this one got a conversion. We're good. So it knows from there. And then you get a little report down here. If I refresh this, actually, you'll see that we're getting a report. 
at the bottom of the page, I've got lots of stuff here from here, but you can see, okay, headline three was shown three times. Headline two was shown five times, total of nine, but I just refreshed it. I didn't actually buy, so there's no conversions yet, but it will know automatically what's good and what's not. And here's the cool thing with something like mist. Um, when you have X number of views, it stops rotating because it automatically knows after a thousand views, say, or 10,000 views, which one has converted best, which one's generated the best. And then from there, you're good to go. It knows, boom, okay, we've finished the experiment. We know this combination works best. We're good. So, you know, I mean, you can set up your parameters and then leave it. And it will automatically optimize itself after X number of views. Very, very cool indeed. Now, how do you actually set that up? Well, let's, this group, you can see I'm, I'm, I'm testing headline, but maybe I want to test some bullets. So what I would do is maybe say, okay, I want to test up, maybe, actually, you know, let, let's could do a test for a subheadline. Um, so... Now, I've got to admit, this is not the John, best. John, no, can I interrupt? Is that all by a short code? I'm sorry, say is again? Is that all by a short code? It, yes, it is. And okay. uh, it's it's fairly simple, although I've been given permission to use this code. I need to optimize it and do a couple of things to it because there's a couple of things I see that I would like to do. And I'll show you the limitation on it. But see this little button up here? This is what Mist does. But it says, okay, what do you want to do? So I'm going to set up a group and I'm going to call it subhead. But yeah, it is all short code. So that makes life easy. So anything that happens inside here is basically what I'm testing. So now I have to set up now an item within that and say, okay, the item would be either text. So I'm going to call this subhead one so that I know what version I'm doing here. And then I could rotate an image. So if I do my bullets via an image, yeah, that's cool. Or if you're doing text, you have to then say, okay, what, what CSS do you want to apply to it? Which is the limitation? I want it so if I'm using short codes, say from Optimize Press for the headlines and things like that, I just want to be able to drop something in the content block uh, between the tags, and I know I'm good. But um, let me just see if I can actually do that. I might be, I might be incorrect. No, no, it's, it's not allowing me to do that, but you get a blank like this and it's all via short code. So I could do something like, um, this is a test sub head one. Now there are now, before I go on, there are other systems out there that do this. There's, um, visually, and there's a couple of other ones, but they're very, very expensive per month. And, um, yeah, they're bloody ridiculous. And the thing is, I've got a crack team of programmers, so I might take this a wee bit further. But now, here's the other thing. Uh, and this was something that Dylan put out there. It didn't sell very well. Because, honestly, and you saw the stats earlier on, most people didn't understand how multivariate split testing works and how powerful it is. And they haven't, they, they didn't apply it. And it's kind of like, uh, even within this group, yeah, I mean, prime example, a lot of people don't use uh, email marketing as part of their business. They haven't got a list or they don't think that their list is significant enough if they have got one and they're not, you know, not building squeeze pages. So they didn't have anything to optimize. However, you guys are far, far, far better the 99% of the market is out there because you've got all these resources at your fingertips. You've got all this education. So that makes all the difference in the world. Now, I'm just going to um, just put a little bit of CSS in here. So I'm just going to go, uh, say, font, weight, uh, bold. Um, this is what I don't like about this is that you have to know um, some of these things. So, I, again, I'm going to add to it. Font size, uh, I'm going to do 22 pixels and color. I'm going to do, um, let's see, I did a blue. So let me do a 
gray. So, okay, that's uh, one item. And then I'm going to do another one right under it and another one right under it. So I'm going to, I'm going to literally just now I'm geeking out a little bit, but I can do all this kind of stuff. And maybe I'm just, the only thing I'm changing is the text. Well, that works out. And then just because this is WordPress, I'm going to remove all those spaces once I'm set up. And now I'm going to update. So I'm going to, whoops, uh, it's probably just lost all my changes. Son of a gun. Okay, let me view the autosave because it autosaved it maybe as I was going. Okay, it did. So I'm going to restore that. Okay. That's annoying, but that is live. Okay, so let's do that and do it one more time, once more, just because we enjoy this. And okay, burr, burr, burr. okay, so I'm going to do that. Okay, so that's subhead two, subhead three. Okay, so we'll update that now. And I'm going to copy that bloody code just in case it does it again. Okay, so now what's going to happen is you'll see a new group at the bottom of the page. You'll see, okay, we haven't had any views on that new group yet. So let me come over here and I'll refresh this page. Hey, awesome. Okay. And if you ever hear that video, you can tell it was recorded at four o'clock in the morning just before launch. That was one of those, okay, everything is going to hell in a handbasket, and I need to record one more video before I pass out. Uh, so I sound, my throat is raspy. I am tired. I'm literally barely able to keep my eyes open. So I am absolutely surprised. Any of you who came to this group from that video, you deserve a medal to be here because of that, because it was a terrible video. And honestly, I was so tired when I did that. Um, okay, so subhead. Okay, why is it not split testing item name? It's not value in, it's not, uh, blah, 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 blah. What did I screw up? Item, item, subhead. I did go take a look for that plugin, and it's no longer for sale, at least from the JV Zoo. It's not. It's actually going up on ClickBank. Oh, gotcha. uh, and they, they basically Dylan sold the business to someone else for a few thousand dollars. And um, they haven't launched it again yet. Ah, oh, here we go. Now it's popped up. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, there we go. That's our test right there. And now if I come over to here. By the way, what I'm trying to do, guys, is I'm trying to get you a copy of this uh, plugin. Awesome. Okay. Almost there. But um, so there's my subhead, and uh, I, if I rotate now, you'll see, hey, fingers crossed, both. okay, it's showing the same one. There we go. So this time, hey, it changed both. both the headline and the subheadline. So now it's rotating through each of them to see, okay, which elements are going to work best. So again, that's kind of on-page split testing, but... As I said, I do other types of split testing. So here's another example of one I do, which is with Easy Video Player. That's the video player I'm using right here. And then what I do is I can set up multiple videos, multiple pitches to test, and then I'll just upload them. I'll give an example of this one. Uh, this is a training video, but if I come over here, I'll go, okay, it logged me out. I thought it might. Okay, so what I can do is I can come into this video and then I can say, okay, do I want to track sales? So I could say yes. Um, so that's doing that. And then it'll say, okay, oh, you know what? I forgot. 
one little thing. I'm going to do this maybe in a different browser because Firefox breaks this. Let me pull up another browser. But with Easy Video Player, you can stream your videos from CloudFront, which is what I do. All my sales videos go there, my training videos. I get to track all of the stats because I'm a stats guy. I want to know basically every, if I'm spending $1,000 on media buys for a week, I better make sure that that thousand dollars is converting i'm not just one of those guys that will just throw out a ton of stuff and hope for the best and it's like oh i made some money great because i did this on a sales page not long ago where just one headline change increased my conversions by 15 percent now when you're talking about like 20 to thirty thousand visitors on that site and you increase your um, conversions that much. That's throughout your entire funnel. Now, that means literally thousands upon thousands of dollars. It boosted my profits by about $30,000. Just that one headline change. And you would never have known that if you didn't test all these things. And that's why when I see all of these uh, um, so-called sales and marketing experts, and they're not doing this kind of thing, I cringe because they're leaving so much money on the table. And even if you're just doing the smallest amount of split testing. Um, oh, my good grief. I can't even remember my own logins. Hold on. Uh, ADD. Well, that's okay. We can't remember either. But uh, most of like just the simple squeeze pages, if you're using just an HTML upload and you've got four of them, Put them in a rotator using what you're teaching here even if it's the base uh, copy is the only thing you've only got two lines to change you know you're it's just a simple maybe a two color form uh, nothing else on there to change you know for the folks that do stuff on a really simple basis some people like the super uh, simple uh, squeeze pages and if you're just testing just that one element portion of it and that type of thing. Maybe we'll touch base on that because it's an HTML. It's a little bit different, you know, where you get you have to use like Notepad++ and then upload via FTP and that kind of thing. It's just, and you can put a little uh, separate tracking cookie on there. So maybe we could touch base after we get done with this wonderful part of the presentation because this stuff is gold, folks, and I'm not kidding you. I sit there and go over this time and time again to watch what Sean does with the video and uh, easy video player because I have it myself. And I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. That uh, you know what that that's exactly right. I mean, there are so many sub elements that you can do, and uh, it, it it absolutely amazes me that, uh, like I say, most people are not doing this kind of thing. But if I wanted to track sales from this one, just as a pure example, guys, uh, I would need to add a button, which is the one thing I was forgetting here. So I'd say I want to visit this site or click here to sign up and I say okay well, let me just throw it in here and um, I want to enable this feature oh no that's the sharing thing so I might just throw in that button and go ahead You know, I'm 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 missing something, and I forgot. I, I I my brain is missing. Oh, I forgot to turn that back on. Okay, there we go. That's what I wanted. Oh, bugger me. Okay, so I can track from my front end sales video. This is where it gets really cool. So, say for example, it could be my inner circle, and I could say, okay, forty seven dollars, and then if I have any upsells, maybe it's the elite program. And that's ninety-seven dollars. Um, and then any other upsells I have, I can then save this, and then boom, boom, boom! I get all my tracking codes, everything I want. If I want to do it, it's pixel conversion or what have you. It's good to go. And then um, I can insert that on the individual pages, the thank you pages for each one, and I know from this video what my conversions actually are. Now, taking it a step further. That's conversion tracking on an individual, but now I can set up split tests. 
And then it says, hey, you've not created any split tests yet, so we'll create a new one. And it'll say, okay, which video do you want to do? Well, I'm going to add this one, which is the one I just altered. And then I'm going to also take maybe this one. And now I'm split testing um, multiple videos. I can have multiple pitches, and literally it will do A-B split testing on all of those. But what will happen is on an individual page where I'm embedding this video, it's going to rotate through each one of those. So it's kind of like multivariate testing, but it's just A-B testing on an individual item. So now I'm going to call this, say, uh, IMSC in a circle test. And then when do I want this to start? So this, again, does the same thing. It will automatically serve the highest converting video after X number of days. So I'll say, OK, this is on the 30th. Funnily enough, that's my birthday. And then um, what metrics is the most important? Is it the plays, the click-throughs, the likes, if you want to do viral videos, um, the shares, the amount of sales, and or the income, or the video effectiveness? So there's lots of metrics you can split test and then optimize against. And uh, June actually made an interesting point, is sometimes ugly is better. Um, no, that's absolutely very, very true. You'll be surprised. Here's the thing. I am a design. I, I, you know what? I hate to say it. I, I was going to use a, a, an expletive there or an offensive word, but I very much focus on good design. However, it amazed me. One of the ugliest sales pages I ever built accidentally got into a rotation and it converted better than my slick looking one. And believe me, I'm married to a graphics designer and I'm not too bad at graphics myself. It shocked the hell out of me how much better this other ugly piece of crap converted. So sometimes, yes, absolutely, you'll be surprised what converts well and what doesn't. But you'll never know if you're not testing those things. So um, very, very interesting. Now, uh, Kathleen's asking, within Google AdWords AdSense, isn't there some way to set up, uh, to, uh, set up and track a sales funnel? Not through Google AdWords or AdSense, but you can do it through analytics. You can set up the content experiments, as I mentioned earlier on, and you can then set up goals and do that and then test those different things as well. So, yes, you can do it for free through that. I'm just showing some other options as well, which, to be quite honest, um, when it comes to my sales funnels, I don't necessarily want Google knowing what's working very well for me. Um, so in those regards, I tend to be a wee bit more private. And I like to keep those stats to myself. Um, but absolutely, yes, you can certainly set that up that way. Now, um, one thing I'm going to do as well, I'm going to give you, I'm literally, okay, this is going to be a, a wee bit amusing. I'm going to give you guys, and I'm literally going to write it right live, a rotator that you can use for WordPress. For, well, actually, for anything. It's just going to be a simple rotator. So, I, and I just thought about this, but I, I thought I'd set this up. So let's just do links. Uh, let's see, that's an array. Um, and what okay, we'll now you're blowing me away. You said you were going to build one, but you didn't say you were going to do it live. <laughs> well, this one's going to be very, very simplistic. So oh, okay. this could be HTTP uh, site one dot com. Uh, this could be an affiliate link, and let, I'm just going to rotate through a couple, just literally just like that. And so basically, you would set up your list of sites you want. Now, I literally, this is not going to have a fancy interface. It's literally going to be cut and dry and ugly. And then um, we'll do, um, okay, link. So we'll then uh, shuffle this okay so we randomize it and then link equals uh let's see array hop um links so we'll grab one link randomly from that and then we'll do uh header um location and link and that is quite literally the most basic rotator 
you will have. That will split test all of your pages. Now, if you're doing any sort of tracking, for example, if you're using Aweber, you have individual forms that will track um, you know, your subscribers and stuff like that. Um, it'll say, okay, this form has been shown X number of times and converted at this rate. This form has been shown at that. So you can set up multiple forms with on individual pages and, uh, you know, that will be good to go. But yeah, literally, boom, that is a rotator. And then what I would do is I could save this as, um, I'll put this, uh, I'll, I'll include this in a zip file underneath and I'll just call it like uh, test.php or actually we'll call it rotate php but i could then save this out multiple ways and say okay this one i'm going to call it um acne .php. then all my offers on this could be all acne offers or pages for a sign up and then i just upload that page to a blog and i'm going to do it um let me just throw it on say one of these random websites here i have now i'm going to throw you my code from uh, my Aweber uh, tracking, and you can place your tracking ID. It's a made to add tracking value, and you can change that per HTML page you upload and change the value yeah. right there. And I'm going to give the code to everyone. That's awesome. Thank you. So, this you could drop Jim's code then on your actual. Um, your actual squeeze page and everything else. And then I'm going to come over here. This is where I find out I've got a bug in my code or something like that. Cause I did that literally without even thinking about it too, too much, but let me just do acne dot BHP. Okay. So it, it did randomly go to site3.com, which doesn't actually exist, but you could see, I would drive um, traffic to acne dot PHP and it would go anywhere I wanted it. Now, again, I'll have to do it again. Let's do, okay, so, and I'll do it again. Let's see, this time it went to site four. Let's do it again. Let's see where it ends up, site two. So yeah, it literally just randomly, randomly, boom, 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 boom. That's a very, very simple and fast site rotator. And thank God, thank the God of coding and PHP there that that actually worked without throwing up an error. But yeah, literally, boom, I'm going to give you that, guys. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to, I'm not even going to make you wait. I'm going to paste this in the chat box right now. You can grab that. And uh, it oh, yeah, send this year, the, the meta, the you've, got the, you've got the tracking code there as well. That's, mm -hmm. that's sent to can... uh, the organizers. Let me just do, this is part of your, um, if you're using Aweber, you can set up a little tracking ID, and that's a, a hidden variable as well. I'm not going to get all geeky, but yeah, it worked know, pretty good. That bloody chat kind of ate my coding a wee bit, but you can put that in just one line. Actually, that will work as I pasted it there, but you can get the idea. I'll put the pretty version or this pretty version up as well. Now, I, funnily enough, mentioning Aweber, I'm going to see if this works. Okay, I've got an Aweber list up here. And if you actually set up, if you have a list with a significant amount of people on it, you can do what's called um, the split testing in there. Now, this is an old list. I haven't broadcasted this list since 2012. So it was safe for me to do an experiment with. But when you create a split test uh, broadcast, actually, let me just delete it and see if I can do it from scratch. You can actually split test even your email. So yeah, you can test your what headline works best. And we did some stuff about copywriting last, uh, well, a couple of weeks ago. But I can literally set up an instant split test right off the bat. So I do say 25%, 25. I'll keep it at 25 and then 25. That should be fine. And then actually I'll just do that. And then what it does, it creates me four blank emails. So I can then test my headlines. Even if I'm not changing all the copy, I can test my headlines. You can literally get a good gauge of what your list actually likes. So this is loading right now, it takes a while. But now I can test my headlines, I can test 
uh, my copy, my calls to action, and literally in a small group, see which one is going out. And what I might do is say, for example, I've got an email I'm doing to, or I plan to send out to say, where's my pen? Okay. Say I've got 1 million people I'm going to email with something. Okay. Now, if I've got 1 million people, I want to know before I do a big blast, how much money I could make. So that's the question. So what I'll do is I'll take a list of, say, 5,000, and I'll do a split test to that list. And then I'll know, okay, email number three did best. Okay, so what I do is instead of randomly guessing, I now take that, and now I'll blast it out to a million people. If I didn't do that, if this is converting, say, this is getting an open rate of, uh, say, oh, I don't know, let's, let's say 20%, okay? And email one and two, we're only getting 15 or 10 percent. I've basically just doubled my open rate. Now, you take that, extrapolate that out to a million people. 10 percent open rate is 100,000 people. 20 percent is literally 200,000 people. Let's equate that to conversions. Say your offer was for $20. I'm going to keep simple numbers and you got a 10% conversion rate across both emails. So 10%, that's uh, 10,000 times 20. Well, that's $200,000 you could have made from that one email if you converted well. Okay, great. But we've just doubled that by doing a simple split test. That's now $400,000 in your pocket. Just because we took the time to do one split test to a small group. It's the, the amount of effect this can have is significant. It truly, truly is. But it's all about that scale. If you've only got a small amount of things, you know, people and audience and everything else, then it's hard to notice the difference. But over a period of time, if you've got something evergreen, if you're doing something that it, you're driving continuously uh, new people and traffic to, then you it will make a significant difference. It's only when you look in the long term of how much difference it will make, it becomes significant. Up close and personal, initially, you might not even notice it, but you know, why throw money away? Look at the long term. That's the that's the key thing there. So here we've got our split test. You can see I've got now group one, two, three, and four. And that just means, okay, great, we've got four. Now I can sit there, I can test my headlines, I can test my copy, and I can see from open rates and click-throughs what I'm doing where. So um, Don's asking, where do you place that code in the blog to make it work right? Um, you know what, Don, let me come to you when we go live, Mike, and then we can see, uh, I can ask you a couple of specific questions here. Um, Okay, so Kathleen, you said that um, I did save the coding you gave us last week if you're trying to recreate. You know, honestly, I can't even remember what that coding was. I think that was for the Facebook fan page, um, in which case do send that back to me and I'll put that under the video. Now, a couple of people asked about last week's video because I, it didn't record or I didn't record it, to be honest. Um, was there a copy of it? redone. Yes, I actually sat down the next morning and redid the main presentation part of that. So you can uh, you can view the content part of week 138 on the website. So uh, now, Jim, before I jump over to the live questions, what there was something specific you wanted me to answer and go over. Remind me what that was real quick, sir. We were going to uh, talk about simple HTML squeezes and um, you know with a split test and you know, all just with ad copy what you could do like we were doing this small piece of code that is inside and that would track you know the clicks you know and everything through yeah, there you know, and that me, helps let me pull this over here a second and what I want to do is if you're setting up simple squeezes I mean there are some very very simple squeezes out there um, if I can find I'm going to give you an example of one that I've been working 
um, with a marketer on. Um, let me see if I can find him. Uh, where is that? Oh, I think this is it. Just uh, we just need to tell folks about that Notepad plus plus, and so it makes it super easy. Yeah. Pull up that uh, document and edit with it, and it's like, wow, there's the lines. That's the only ones you can, you're allowed to change. It's yeah, I was actually going to gonna find code. an example here. This, um, okay. you were talking about simple squeeze pages. I wanted to share this one. This one is converting at 75%. And uh, we've been doing all sorts of split testing on a very simple squeeze page. Now, this one's promoting Empower Network. Uh, this guy uh, is actually a uh, Brit that was doing this. And it's a very simple thing. It's got a little graphic. You can see a great big ass call to action. But um, all you need to do is, even if it's just a simple index HTML page like this, um, all you need is to pull it up in a text editor. Um, one I use, which is one that Jim mentioned, um, is Notepad++. And it's a very simple little text editor. And uh, in fact, I'm, I'm on the Mac. And if you're on the Mac, I, this one I'm using here is called Edit Rocket. Uh, and you can see I'm changing things like HD access files. And you just get the, the piece you need. And what I was going to do real quick is show you, I'm going to view the source on this one. And literally, if you want to, guys, if you find a good squeeze page that you know is converting well, don't be afraid to go grab it. Obviously, you, you want to... Uh, don't do anything copyright wise, like use this guy's images, but don't be afraid to grab it and take it, you know, literally view source, copy it, put it in. And I'm just going to put this in um, a text editor and then save it as the, in, in all of these uh, text editors, I just want to say that they all have, Sign what's called syntax formatting to make sure you're getting it right. So I'm going to do say this is index.html. Okay, it now knows it's HTML. You can see all of the tags have turned blue and all these different things. So now I can see okay, what's going on? Now here's what Jim was talking about. You can see here if this was one version of my squeeze page that I was testing, there's a little add. He's you know using Aweber. So you could change all of these details to be yours and then change the format, everything else. But you can see here, he's got meta ad tracking, which is what Jim was talking about just now. So you can now just change that random variable there. This could be, uh, I could just say version one and then make a couple of changes to the page, save it. And then I could do a version two. I could make a change to the headline, headline, headline and save it. So now I've got, I could put this in a folder in fact, what I'm going to do just to um, for uh, schnitz and giggles, I could do like this, sign up. I'm going to do, oh, I've actually got one in here already. Let me call this test, okay? And apparently, I've got that folder too. Okay, I'm going through all my usual suspect of folders. I'm going to call it squeeze. I haven't used that one yet. There we go. Now, I could put up um, that squeeze page. And now say I've got two versions of it. I could go, um, actually, I'll just, I, you know, I'm going to change them to number one, number two, number three. So I've got three different squeeze pages. And now I could edit that tracking information and edit those pages as I see fit. And then I can take my little rotate.php and I'll just call this index. Dot PHP. So what happens is if I send anyone to this folder, which we'll do in a second, it will randomly rotate. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change it to go. Um, now, if I'm clever, I'll just do one dot HTML. Two dot HTML. Three dot HTML. Now, the, when I do this as a plugin, it's going to be a lot more sophisticated than this. I just threw this together in two seconds. Now, what's going to happen is if I go to dogsdaymagazine.com forward slash squeeze, fingers crossed, you can see it automatically redirected to number three. 
Let me go there again. Now it's gone to version number one. Guess what? You now have split testing with ad tracking. Done in a heartbeat, just like that. Dude, you get extra tappy for that. That is just crazy. <laughs> well, like I say, this is this is the sh this is the sh uh, sh uh, sh find the right word stuff that I do when I'm bored and I'm just asking around. That's but I'm going to give you all of that right now. Uh, in fact, what I will do is, you know, I should ask Sh Shakir if I can give you this code, but I know, put it this way, I shouldn't give it to you. You should go grab it, um, but you can get to it from here, and I'll put that link in here. It's a great converting squeeze page. Um, I should give you the link, and then you get go grab it, but you'll get the idea. And what I will do is I will give you that zip file of that folder of this, and then uh, you've got some cool code to rock and roll. So um, does that specifically answer what you were referring to? I want to make sure um, of that, Jim, before I go on. It does. And what we were doing was keeping it simple with the tools, the base tools, because they don't have to do a lot with a simple squeeze like that. You know, that was a great example. I had one that was even like a quarter of that, like really dumbed down, like just a headline with a form and a just base color, you know, so it was, um, you know, it was like a selection, like an interactive, uh, it asked, uh, asked a question and where did you see us or whatever, that kind of thing. But there's multiple different styles and types, but just to give them the base, they could go along and grab it, find the appropriate images that are licensed to them, and then go in and make something work. That's the whole idea of it. The advanced stuff is fantastic. I love it. But to give them the simple tool for the folks that are, you know, not as advanced and let them be successful and start getting that list built, especially if they're bringing in, you know, even if they want bought a 25 or $45 solo, a 100-click solo, you know, get something started. It doesn't cost a lot, but then you could start today. That's exactly right. And you, you raise a very, very good point there because it doesn't have to be complicated. Now, obviously, I talk about the, the big numbers and the big stuff because that's where I, you know, that's where I am. And sometimes, I mean, Jim's have actually raised a very good point. Is, uh, honestly, sometimes I forget about the just starting off side of things. Uh, so that was actually very, very cool. And hopefully you guys will be able to use that script I've just given you. And what I will do um, is I will adapt this very quickly, if I can, so that you can um, put your own stuff in here. And I'll put a demo headline and stuff like that so that you can at least have this base set up. And then you can rock and roll from there. That'd be cool. Um, I think that will be easy for me to do real quick. And then um, rock and roll. I guess that you know that that'll be the best way to put it. Doesn't have to be complex. Uh, this goes right into Facebook, or it can be outside of Facebook. You can do all sorts with it. Send a solo, but yeah, it's basically a good headline. And you'll see here, there's no email. To, uh, sorry, no name to fill in. It's just boom, 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 done. You could rock and roll with that very, very easily. Yeah, a simple one field. Uh... No confirmed opt-in. That was another point. A lot of times, since you're not adding a name, and in the rotator, you know, you could do the blind capture, and then they could take it to one of, um, you know, you could rotate the second level, rotate the squeeze, and then rotate the video like you're saying. So hopefully we can try and work on that too, or, if they, or at least maybe do two videos. If folks don't want to do the videos, you know, if they just have a standard lead capture and then your thank you page is you know where they need to go and see it so they could we need to work on that a little bit too yeah just get i mean keep it simple guys i mean the if you're doing dealing with wordpress then you could set up four individual posts or pages or something like that that's not linked up anywhere and just do it right from there i mean there's plenty of plugins we looked uh, in in recent weeks, I've promoted a few different um, squeeze page plugins that work very well. 
Mark Thompson's last one, List Eruption, works very, very well. It sets up your thank you pages. It sets up your squeeze pages. You keep them very, very simple. They're also responsive, so they work great on mobile. And literally, boom, 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 done. And then you set up a simple little rotator like I've just showed you, and you're good to go. It's as simple as that. So yeah, keep it simple. Don't You don't have to go complex. And then you can include things like your videos and what have you. A lot of these cool plugins like that have a lot of this kind of stuff and these kind of features built right into them. So you you know you can literally just use that rotator script I gave, I, I built for you um, just to go to those and literally click together a squeeze page, keep it simple, and then rock and roll. So with that being said, um, now people are asking about the Promote Me Pro. You know what? Let me do a quick demo of that. Um, Promote Me Pro is basically complete social media automation. And apparently I broke it because of the upgrade I was doing to it. So I'm not going to show Promote Me Pro right now. <laughs> but what I will do is I'll record a video about it tomorrow and then send it out and everyone can have a look at it. I was just putting the latest test version in um, before the session and I didn't have a chance to test it. So, oh, well, we'll not do that today, but we will do that. Uh, as I said, I'll put out a video about that and you'll get that tomorrow. So um, what I'll do now then uh, is go over to the live Q and A. So guys, if you've got a question, put your hand in the air uh, and then we can uh, answer any questions you have and we can rock and roll. Uh, so let me see who we got up first this evening. Um, you know what? Let me go with Don because Don had a question and I, I wanted to make sure I was answering it right. So Don, what's your question, sir? How can I help you? Okay, I think I understand what you did here. Since you went index PHP, that that's going to have to be in the root part of the directory of a blog in order for that to work. So pick up the page first. Right? Yeah, you'd want it in a subdirectory because index.php, if you put it in the root directory of the blog, would basically kill your WordPress. That's okay. That's what I was wondering there. So where would be the best place to put it in there so I don't interfere with anything else, I guess would be my question. Just any subfolder. You can call the folder anything you like. I called it squeeze. You can okay. sign up, but yeah, subfolder and then direct them there. You're good to go. Now, will this work with all your posts or do I have to build a page in the blog basically to make it work? Uh, it can work anywhere. That little redirector script I gave, you can put it to any URL. You could, you could send it to Google, Yahoo, and Bing and split test the search engines if you want to. It really doesn't matter. All it does is redirect them to a certain destination and then you have your tracking stuff on those individual pages for them. So in other words, I could use the permalink structure they used to get it to where I wanted inside the blog, basically? Yeah, That's basically, yes. You would just take your permalink to whatever the squeeze page is or the sub page, and then you're good to go. Okay. It just works right. in full URL, so it, it, it's not, it's, it, it doesn't care where it goes as long as it exists. Now, this would also work on a standard HTML file too, right? Absolutely, yes. All right, that's my questions. All good. Well, thank you. That was actually a fairly simple one. I'm glad, glad you asked that one. And Don was kind of, he, after speaking last week about split testing, uh, did raise a very good uh, question, which is why this happens here. So this inner circle, these Ask Sean sessions are really driven by you guys. If you've got questions and um, there's stuff that you want me to cover, that's why we're here. I want to help you guys get to where you want to be. So, okay, let me go to Herman and see how they're doing in South Africa. Are you getting cold over there? Hello. How are you doing? Hello, Sean. How are you? Doing good. Good. No, yeah, you're quite right. It is, uh, 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 you know, we're getting into winter now. It's quarter past uh, uh, four in the morning. So, yes, it is a bit cold. <laughs> well, rather you than me, sir. So what can I do for you this evening? Yeah. I just wanted to know um, when uh, when are we getting that site builder that site builder thing? Well, um, I was hoping this week, but with the launch and everything else, I'm a wee bit pressed. So I'm hoping, hoping um, next week before I go away, because um, I've got my birthday 
then uh, and funnily enough okay my wife's not in the room and i know she won't listen to this recording we also have my 10th anniversary um for which i'm buying if i can a congressional medal of honor for my wife a replica because she deserves it for putting up with me for 10 years but i'm also taking away for a couple of days to texas san antonio where we're having our new house built and uh so we're, we're doing a wee trip over there. So I'm going to try and get it done for then. I have been working uh, behind the scenes on integrating this mist <coughs> into it, but I'm hoping I'm hoping within the week. So fingers crossed on that one. Yeah, now because uh, uh, I was I was I was actually going to ask you. I mean, uh, because he followed me on uh, on Pinterest, and uh, um, and there was quite a nice picture that I reprint. Uh, beautiful place in the country and then she was actually telling me that you're going to San Antonio after the launch next week you know so so I had that information too eh? <laughs> <laughs> awesome stuff yeah <laughs> she she knows we're going we, we actually just booked all the flights and did all that stuff yesterday but she's got a few surprises she doesn't know about so well, fingers well, crossed uh, well good luck with the launch and uh, and uh, enjoy the break and uh, well done on the 10 years congratulations to you both and uh, hoping that you still be around here for another 30 or 40 eh? Yes, if she hasn't killed me before, then if you see the news headlines <laughs> about uh, you know uh, manic marketer killed by manic wife, um, <laughs> she, you know what happened. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes, but yes, she hasn't killed me yet, so it's a good sign. No, great stuff. Well done, Sean. Cheers, eh? Thanks a lot. Awesome. Okay. Um. So, with that being said, let me see. Let me go with Edward. Go ahead, Edward. What's your question this evening? How can I help you, sir? Yeah, I had a question about that um, variant um, tracking there. Yeah. When you were showing the images there, um, like it's like they um, they're not all shown. I know they're not all shown. Like um, they're are they cloaked or something? Well, what happens is um, okay. Let me exp this. This is a good question. Um, what happens is when WordPress serves a page it comes into what's called uh, a variable called content and then these variables or this content has the short code um embedded in it raw so what happens is they go through what's called a content filter and what the plugin does is it says oh well before you show edward the page we need to take that short code, process it, and then we come out with image one. So instead of all of that short code and everything that's happening between those short codes, everything that's happening in here, which could be image one, two, three, it knows that it's going to say randomize and pick just one, and that's the one it shows to Ed. So all of the other items are hidden just one item is chosen randomly and shown to you. So for each element it's doing via multivariate testing, it hides the rest and then only shows you one version. But what it's doing at the same time is it's recording which version was shown to you. So it knows to show the stats because out of image one and then in another group, we've got text five, and all the rest of it, it's storing those numbers, one, five, and what have you. So it knows, okay, if you actually said then convert and you, you, you added to cart, it would then know, okay, each one of these gets a check mark because that view resulted in a sale. So that's, that's how it kind of basically works. So yeah, you don't see all of the images. They're not hidden in hidden divs or anything like that. It just pulls one item from the random group and then shows you it kind of like spinning text except it's spinning items does that make sense that clarif yep that clarifies it for me awesome great that was the only one i had tonight <laughs> awesome well thank you very much sir appreciate that okay well that's no that was actually a good question because i mean without getting all in nerdy and geeky you never quite know okay how does it work what is going on well that's kind of like the 
as non-geeky as I can get with that one. So uh, let's go over to Jerry and see how he's doing. How you doing, sir? Great. And you, Sean? Not too shabby. Not too shabby, sir. Good. When you get down there, make sure that uh, you get some of that good Dex Mex. Oh, yeah. hell yes. Um, I I have an affinity for good Texas barbecue. And, uh, I'll give you my address and you can chip me up a little if you want. <laughs> there you go. Uh, no, I, I put it this way. I come from the land of bland when it comes to food. And being a chef um, in one of my past lives, I did have an opportunity to work with a lot of good barbecue chefs. And uh, I tell you what, now, everywhere says they've got great barbecue in the South. I mean, you know, like a, a good good Memphis barbecue, good uh, Carolina barbecue. But I must admit, good Texan barbecue, you cannot beat it, especially with uh, the milder heat from the peppers and everything else. You know, that, that works better for me. So what's your question, sir? What can I do for you? Well, actually, I just wanted to uh, give a call out to one of our Inner Circle members who helped me uh, immensely the last couple of days. I decided to go ahead and um, start keeping records with, um, well, what is it called? Uh, Quicken. Uh-huh. And Rana was a godsend to help me on that, and I really just wanted to thank her. You know, it's showing how good the inner circle is. Well, you know, it was funny because um, Alan was also saying to me this morning uh, how great you guys have all been with their testing of uh, Rapid Content Wizard. And we've got people in there who are willing to jump in at a moment's notice and help uh, when people are struggling. So, guys, I really appreciate you participating and being part of this. And if, you, if you're helping out people who are struggling, even, you know, with – something uh, like quicken you know that that's absolutely awesome and i thank you so much for that i know alan also uh passes on his gratitude for all the help that he's received um with the testing of uh rapid content wizard as well and you know i just want to tip my hat to all you guys as well because you make every, all of this worthwhile that's the, i mean i built this for you guys and you guys are here week after week and pushing yourselves forward. That's what it's all about. So absolutely awesome. And thank you, Jerry. I appreciate you uh, uh, coming on to uh, pass that along as well. Yeah, and if you have any coders that would like to do a job for me, just have them send me in, um, a uh, Skype. I would much rather pay someone in the inner circle than someone outside. Well, okay, I'll, I'll put it as a general uh, note. If there's any good PHP programmers in this group right now, Jerry does have a small job. All of my teams are tied up right now with my projects. Otherwise, I'd send one of them your way. Um, I know you're trying to do a uh, stealth um, sign-up script. Uh, well, the only thing I really need is something to put at the end of the autoresponder that will cause the um, capture page to energize because I can get all the information over there but I just can't figure out how to get that, um, you know, enter button to go. Um, you know, maybe I'm missing a point here. I might be able to help. If, if it's what I'm thinking is, I might be able to help you right now. But so basically you've got a sign up form or a subscription form, but you want them to hit the enter button. Well, uh they hit one enter button and it immediately takes them to the another page mm -hmm. with all their information there. And I'm hoping to find a way of having that second page get its enter button pushed without them having to double click. Ah, so you, you're doing multiple signups to multiple pages. Right. You know, I can give you some code for that, but I know it won't do you any good. I actually do that with the inner circle uh, because when you sign up, it signs you up for the webinar. It does a couple of other things like that, but you could probably get that done on, you could probably find programmers on Fiverr that will do an hour's worth of coding. And honestly, it's not a difficult piece of code to do, but here's what, you, here's basically what you need. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to geek out for two seconds. Okay. 
I'm going to do another little piece of code here. What you would do is you'd redirect them to something like this, and then you would have something like, um, say, email equals, um, okay, get email, and then uh, first name equals, you know, um, say, first name. Basically, that's pulling your query string information. And then what you would have is, now the way I do it, I'm going to give you a little piece of so pseudocode you can give to your programmers if you hire someone from Fiverr, is uh, iframe one. And then basically it would, and this is called pseudocode because it's kind of based the base process. Uh, show the code or the, the second sign up code as an iframe, oh, as a, sorry, as a form. Uh, then show inside or uh, JavaScript uh, submits form to hidden iframe. And then basically you could do that multiple times. Um, so this could be like sign up one and then sign up two if you have multiple forms. And then what happens is you have that at the bottom of, you know, you, you have your thank you page. So th then this piece of code kind of sits at the bottom. It can be done via a, a WordPress plugin or something like that very, very simply. But basically all it does is presents the form, all of the variables are hidden, and then a little piece of JavaScript submits that form to a hidden iframe, and then you're signed up to multiple accounts. So Can you put that in the uh, box for me? You know what? I'm going to give it to you in Skype so it doesn't kill the formatting. Okay. But basically, that's kind of what you would do. Um, now I'm going to find you on Skype real quick. And let me, you know, you know what? Would anyone else find this valuable? Tell you what, Jerry, do me a favor. If you get this coded, let other people in the inner circle have it. Would that be fair enough? That's fair. Okay. So I'm going to give this to Jerry when he gets it done. Uh, and he'll he'll announce on a future Ask Sean or something. But there you go. And that, that will do. That's how I do it. I won't go into all of the fanciness of it because it's there's there's a few subtleties but it's the ba that's the base idea and then uh, yeah you can have it submitted to all over the place i mean i have a system called stealth register that does that and uh i i keep meaning to put it into a wordpress plugin i just haven't yet but there you go thank um, you very much hopefully that'll help okay cool now the other thing you know you know what guys if you want to do it with a weber um, there is a thing you can do. If you get the email, you can also have that email sent to, like if you've got a list, just as a, as a kind of random thing, uh, say it's IMSC special list at aweber.com. If you send an email from that email with the name as the um, from name, and a blank email to one of those lists, it will actually automatically sign them up as well. But if you're doing, I know you're doing all sorts of different ones, um, you know, you, you've got to go a little more in depth. So, okay, well, with that being said, thanks very much for that, Jerry. I appreciate that. Hopefully that will get you on the way there. Um, let's see who else we got that we can help here. Now I'm going to go with, uh, I'm, I'm going to try and say your name, sir. I hope I get it right. Ruchik, um, go ahead. What's your question, sir? How can I help you this evening? Well, uh, this is my first webinar, and it's awesome. You provide great value. You know, this is great learning, learning experience for me. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now, first of all, did I get your name right, and ha or how do you? Pronounce yeah, exactly. It? Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's uh, it's Ronald Ruchik. It's perfect. Okay, great. Okay, good. Well, what's your question, sir? How can I help you this evening? Uh, I'm building WordPress plugin, 
and uh, how should I build a licensing system for WordPress plugin like a single like single site license or multi site license or development license? Ah, uh, well, I'll be quite yeah. honest. There was nothing off the shelf that I could use. I had to build my own. Um, basically, what we did, you, you would have to get someone to program one for you. Um, the easier the, the basic process we use um, is where is my pen again? What we do is when they install it on, say, this is the customer's blog, we have a registration system that pops up. So it stops the execution of the plugin before they've licensed it. And then it talks back to our license server, which could be our membership site. And it says, Okay, I've put in my key and my email. Um, and it says, basically, do I have any licenses available? So with Wishlist member, we have multiple levels. And it's like, okay, uh, do we have any free? And if I show you it real quick, um, let me go, let me think, where is the best place to do this? Okay, this is going a bit geek. This is becoming the Ask Sean PHP session. Um, but let me go promote me pro. There we go. And I'll go into the back end here. So we use Wishlist Member. And you'll see I've got my license checker here. And then I've got all my different levels. And I say, okay, what's their level number of functionality? And how many domains are they allowed? And uh, so it says, okay, one domain, 10 domains. And then if it's unlimited, okay, fine. So that's basically what we do and check. And then what we do is um, if the customer's request for activation to, uh, you know, and the license checker says, yep, that's good, it returns a special code back that then activates and unlocks the plugin and they're then good to go. But that's basically the process it depends on what you're using as your membership manager. It depends on what you're using um, with your system. And you've also got to obviously know the domain that they've installed it on and then uh, record that over here as well. So you've got, you've got a few bits and pieces going on. It is possible to do it. I had to build my own, and I don't know of any good ones on the market, which is why I built my own. And uh, okay. I've had people ask me if I would sell my system, and unfortunately, no, I can't. And if I did, it would be very, very expensive. Okay. okay. Uh, but how how can you understand that this person has uh, like uh, single light license need or a developer license need? Like, uh, like, do you track their PayPal and uh, amount uh, which is deposited in your like PayPal, and then you? Um, like, uh, like you know, like your system can understand that okay, licensed uh, dev license, the developer license for this guy because he has bought developer license. Well, the way we do it is basically if they've got ten licenses and they're a multi-site license user, uh, because we're recording, um, say we've got, um, say they've got their, they've got nine out of ten used. If they install it on site number 10, when it does its initial activation request, it says you've got one license left. We've just added it. Now, if they went to site 11 and they tried to activate it, it would say, uh-uh, no, you've got no more licenses available. So we just send them a little error notice that says, sorry, you're out of licenses. So it's just the fact for their user account, we know how many they've got. But the cool thing is we also allow them to go in to their members area. And if they say, oh, well, I'm not using this one anymore, they delete it. Well, what happens is on, say this was site number five. Well, on site number five, suddenly it's deactivated. And now site number 11 can be activated. So again, you've got to give the users a way to modify their licenses and do whatever they need to do. Okay, okay, got it, okay, got it. 
Uh, my second question is, I have a very small list and uh, uh, less reputation in Warrior Forum. So how can I increase my seller? How can I get a good JV broker or what should I do for that? Um, that's a good question. There are some very good JV brokers out there. Um, usually JV brokers do require a deposit um, okay. or you can partner up with a well-known marketer if you have an introduction or someone you can speak to. Um, the Ask around and join some of the JV groups um, on Skype and on Facebook and just ask, I'm looking for a broker for, a, for my product. Is there anyone who would be interested um, doing that and PM me? And just, just ask around in the JV spaces. There's lots of JV brokers and it really depends on what you're trying to launch, um, whether you're going to find the right person for, for you. What are you launching? What's your product? Uh, it's a WordPress plugin, basically, and uh, it helps uh, to boost conversions. So I'm working on that. I have many good WordPress plugin idea. And uh, in fact, I don't know PHP, but uh, I think I should learn PHP. I think it, it will better help me to build uh, my business. Uh, yeah, what do you no, suggest uh, you do? It's it's a good language to learn if you go if you want to do a lot in that space. It's fairly simple to learn, um, and then again, you can also find a lot of good programmers who are already well versed, and then get them to do it for you. Yeah, I have already had a one guy for this, but uh, the big issue is that you know how how should I handle the technical support because there are the many technical issues comes. And uh, like uh, I have to pay him very high again, and or should I have like uh, for me it's difficult for me to create entire team for me at this present because uh, it requires a lot of um, capital. So um, that's the issue. But uh, like I'm I'm thinking that hire hire some guys from ODAS to pay hourly for technical issues. Uh, what do you suggest? You can do Odesk. You can find services out there that will do it pretty cheap, and they do it like per ticket. Um, there are lots and lots of outsourcers in that space. You want someone who is technically knowledged uh, in WordPress and well versed in FTP and stuff like that, um, and you will probably have high turnover which means you probably should have two people working with you so that if one disappears, you're not left doing your own support. Um, Say for anyone out there who's thinking about doing products, this is kind of like a, a wee side tip. Um, you can get your own um, software. Trellis is a very good uh, open source system, or you can sign up with somewhere like Zenda which is very good, but there's plenty of good um, customer support people out there. Just make sure they have good training on what your system and plugin is so that they know how to answer any questions. They're very, very knowledgeable and you're good, good to go. Okay, so what are the places you suggest uh, I should uh, I should find to hire this kind of the customer support, except Odesk or, or what? Uh, what kind of sites they are? You can ask around, but um, onlinejobs.ph is good. Uh, Freelancer.com tends to be more um, people who are looking for individual projects, but Odesk is good and onlinejobs.ph. But to be quite honest, if you're just starting out, I would stay, stay with Odesk um, because you can do a lot of control and management there. And... Um, I, I think that'll be a better bet. Now, there's companies like Freelancer, like I say, Elance, but they're honestly more per project, not long term. So Odesk is probably a better bet. Cheaper is onlinejobs.ph, but um, I think you're going to have better luck with Odesk. Okay, okay. I'll try that. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Great questions. Yeah. And uh, let's see, um, Jim, you got a, uh, something you wanted to say about the, or you wanted me to go over something real quick? 
with the simple rotator? Yeah, uh, just a real quick. Uh, I think with the placement of the rotator, the code uh, might help a little bit. I don't yeah, cover that part. Let me let me just because yeah, that's what Don was mentioning as well. I just want to make sure there's no confusion. Um, I put this on a site where I already have WordPress. Uh, so you can see this is like the root of WordPress right now. And you can see I've got all my base files in here. But what I did is I created a subfolder where I could hide this squeeze page. And I had called it um, sign up. Whoops, no, that's not it. Where did I put it? Well, I put it in a folder called squeeze, but I guess I must have deleted it. Okay, well, let's say it's right here. So I'm going to put this folder, which has the rotator and my squeeze pages in here. Those, you don't have to have these. Okay. Um, you can, it, it can go to any URL. It could go to a page you have in WordPress. It just depends on what you put inside that list inside this index.php. So if I did, if I just uploaded this into a subfolder called squeeze, and I deleted these, that's all you would need. And all you would do was go to like um, dogsdaymagazine.com forward slash squeeze. Because it's index.php already, it doesn't need it on the end because it knows that's the main file for that folder. And then um, it would go there. Now I set it up to go to that and I took those pa those pages down. So but that's basically all you need to do. Do not put it in the root folder of your website if you've got a website there because it will interfere. You do need to put it in a subfolder. So hopefully that helps a lot. Um, does that answer your question there, Jim? Or the, you know, is that is that clearer? I think that's going to help, folks, because I was Perfect. getting some, some Perfect. chat yeah, on you, that. You're right, because you, you've got to – you got to make sure that you're um, clear on where you're putting these things. Otherwise, you end up with all sorts of headaches and hassles you do not want. And then, uh, you know, you're in 10 tons of stuff you don't want to be in. So the last I, thing I need to do is blow more stuff up, and just it helps the other folks too. <laughs> you got, yeah, that's you're absolutely right. Um, I can't tell you how many sites I've blown up this week, and uh, it's... Uh, Makes for interesting times. But then again, that's the world we're in and the game we're in. So all good. So, okay. Well, I guess that was the last question this evening, guys. So I'm going to get out of here, go get some chewings, and uh, we will rock and roll from there. So, Jim, thank you very much for uh, being here this evening and kind of co hosting. Appreciate that. And thank you all for uh, no problem. being here. I, I appreciate every sing each and every single one of you. And uh, taking time out of your evening, no matter where it is, like South Africa at four o'clock in the morning. And uh, we've got people here from uh, India, Pakistan, China. Uh, we've got people from Russia, Japan. So we are a global enterprise here. Awesome stuff. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to go get some chewings and probably go kill some zombies with Jim. And uh, we'll uh, have some fun from there. Take it easy. Cool. We'll do this again next week. <laughs>